So the Buddha himself searched for this happiness, and having found it, he wanted those who relied upon him to also gain it. And therefore he preached with great compassion. The Dhamma that the Buddha preached is not speculative. It's not something that he imagined. It's true Dhamma that he found. It is valid. And whether others like it or not, the Buddha, when he encountered the opportunity to teach, he did so. And similarly, Sayadawji will teach the teaching of the Buddha according to the instructions of the late Most Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw, whether people like it or not. And if the people who are listening follow the instructions precisely with faith, this correct practice will lead to the safe destination. So in 60 days, one is sure to encounter this in a very special way. At the opening ceremony, Sierraji spoke about three kinds of ponya, or meritorious deed. Dana, or the deed of generosity, sila, morality, and bhavana, or mental development. Ponya is something which purifies one's life, one's existence. When we say that it is something that purifies our life, this means that it elevates one, it lifts one's up, so that one's life won't be low. Both oneself and others, no one at all likes to be low class, likes to be low level. For those who like good things, the Buddha spoke about the trainings he spoke starting from the basics. We begin with the training of sila. Dana is not something that can purify our physical, verbal, and mental behavior. It is not among the dhammas which are to be practiced. What is to be practiced to be developed are the three trainings. These are to be learned, to be put into practice, and to be repeatedly developed until they're fulfilled. And therefore they're called seka, seka, or trainings. And these three trainings are first of all sila, or morality, second of all samadhi, concentration, and third panya, or wisdom. The three trainings that the Buddha spoke about are trainings so that humans will be truly human. If one is born a human, it's important to be a true human being. It's important to be able to have a human heart, human mentality. And it's important to develop special human knowledge. So, the Buddha spoke about these three and about these three trainings. And for those who want to gain these things, who want to be a true human with human mentality and to develop special human knowledge, he taught in a very easy way how to practice these, how to gain these three trainings. He taught with great compassion and knowledge. He didn't have any expectation to receive gifts from people. 
He didn't do it because he wanted people to look up to him or think highly of him. All he wanted, all he intended was that when people know how to practice the three trainings, they will know how to be truly human. They will know how to have a human heart. They will know how to develop special human knowledge. That was his objective. When we live in a human society, that is, we live in a family or we live with relatives, uh, most people don't like killing. Most people don't like having their things stolen. Most people don't like having their daughters abused or raped. Most people don't like being lied to, especially when it comes to lies that could ruin one's reputation or destroy one's wealth. And most people don't like drinking, which makes us forget our, our responsibilities as humans, makes us forget to keep our heart humane. And therefore the Buddha showed how these acts have faults. He showed that these acts bring bad results, both in the present lifetime, as well as leading to bad future rebirths. If one avoids doing these deeds, then one's life becomes better. So what the Buddha spoke about first was the faults of misdeeds, the problems that arise through committing them, and the advantages that come from avoiding them. And Saraji can't speak as completely as the Buddha did, but he has to uh, speak as much as to the extent that he has learned himself. He has to speak in order that these relatives who have come here, Asian relatives, world relatives, relatives throughout samsara, beings who can't live without food or water can, can continue to survive if they have food and water. So if one eats what is suitable, then one will be in good health. Yeah, but if one eats what is unsuitable for one, then one can damage oneself, one's health, or one can even mistakenly eat something poisonous. So knowing this, one who wants to be able to carry out one's own life, be able to do things for oneself, one's family, at one's work, someone who understands this will eat what is suitable and will avoid the unsuitable things. So if we avoid eating what doesn't suit us, then we don't get the bad results involved in eating unsuitable food. And if we eat the food that is suitable for us as well, then we can be be healthy. So we get full benefit by both avoiding unsuitable food and by eating what is good for us and suitable. And this is the way the, the Buddha instructed people to behave. He, he pointed out the things that are unsuitable for us to do. He said, don't follow that path. That path leads to suffering. It leads to danger. So he, he pointed out the path that should be followed. If you follow this, it's good for you. He spoke about the three trainings in ways that people of all ages could understand. He spoke according to the, to the level of the listener so that they could understand no matter what age they were how to follow the three trainings. First of all, misdeeds are like unsuitable food or like poison. 
the Buddha pointed this out. They harm us just the way bad food can harm us. And good deeds are deeds that should be done. They're like suitable food. They help us. So this is the training of sila, sila sika. And Sieroji has already mentioned about this. We have to understand how to practice this correctly. And if we understand then about misdeeds, how bad they are, we should, what we should have is the healthy fear and healthy shame regarding doing unwholesome deeds. One should be disgusted by doing them as well as fearful of them in a healthy way. And one should also have the ability to put oneself in other people's place. This ability to understand that I wouldn't like that to be done to me. If that were done to me, I wouldn't be able to bear it. Understanding that others feel the same way. These two qualities are the start of having morality, having, having healthy shame and fear regarding misdeeds, and having the ability to understand how other people feel. When one understands what our basic responsibility is, is as a human being, and one has shame and fear regarding uh, misdeeds, then one will avoid killing. One will avoid stealing, avoid committing sexual misdeeds, avoid lying. And as one does this, when one looks back upon one's life, one sees how avoiding these actions makes one's behavior beautiful and delightful. One's behavior becomes peaceful. One's life becomes peaceful. And this is human virtue to have behavior that is like this. So when one has moral shame and moral fear and therefore avoids doing wrong, harming others, it's not just for oneself. One is not the only one that benefits from avoiding misdeeds. One also is not harming others, and so both sides win when one avoids doing misdeeds. One who behaves like a true human being controls oneself and at the same time protects, protects others. This morality is the basis for concentration and wisdom to be developed, and therefore we must first learn about sila, morality. The word sikha, or training, means learning. First of all, one has to learn how to keep, how to perform the trainings, how to keep sila. And then one has to have experiential practice. One knows that these acts, misdeeds, are disgusting. And one has to have the courage to avoid them in practice. One has to be brave enough to avoid doing things that harm others. So one needs to develop this type of courage, and then one's sila, morality, will become well-developed. And as one is going along, if one does wrong, if one does something wrong, when one learns that one has done something wrong, one should have the bravery, the courage, to correct oneself. Whether one has uh, made a mistake with regarding one's monk's rules or whether it's the rules of a yogi, when one knows one has committed a, a, a breach of one's sila, one has to correct one's mistake, admit the mistake to oneself, go through the process of correcting it, and this requires courage too. This sila is a teaching which makes our physical and verbal behavior tamed. And it's called sasana, 
Sasana means a method for taming, for becoming cultivated. And when, when it is completely developed, then this is called sasana sampati, or development of the fulfillment of the sasana, fulfillment of this training. So for sila, morality, to become uh, fully developed, first of all we need careful listening, sadhukang savana. That means one needs to listen respectfully. One needs to um, listen in order to know what is it that is to be avoided. What are the deeds that we need to avoid if we're going to keep sila? And we also have to put what we learn into practice. We have to take it to heart. And this is called sadhukang manasikara. We have to incorporate the teaching that we hear. So these two are connected. One can't, uh, one can't have uh, one or the other. One has to have both. So in order to know how to be a true human being by keeping sila, one has to listen to learn what it is that needs to be avoided and also what is it that needs to be done. And one needs to also take this to heart. One has to take it in and put it into practice. So. When listening to this Dhamma about sila, one shouldn't let one's hands or arms move about, one shouldn't fidget, one shouldn't let your mind, don't let your mind wander. When Sayadaji looks at the yogis, he thinks, some people are not very interested in this topic. In human society, it is very important to know how to be a true human. And one who wants to know how to be truly human, how should one live in order to be truly human? One who wants to know this should listen carefully. If one is scratching here and there, fidgeting, then it looks like such a person doesn't really want to learn about this practice. and. Uh, on one hand, if, if someone is trying to give you a gift and you just back up, then the, the person trying to give the gift may feel something. And so, please listen carefully. Sila, or morality, is very important because it's the base. And it's not just needed for by Buddhists, but it's important for the whole world. It's needed for everyone in the world. This basic human practice is like a mouth. What, what is mouth for? For beings who cannot live without food and water, a mouth is for putting food and water into our bodies. And if we don't have a mouth, we can't put food and water in. Or if our mouth is defective in some way, if, if it's unhealthy, we may be able to put something in, but not enough, or the food won't be tasty. But when we can eat properly because of having a, having a good mouth, then nourishment, oja, spreads throughout our body, and we have the strength to accomplish what we want to do. So when we don't have a good mouth, we can't get proper nutrition. And one may suffer from being hungry because one doesn't have a big enough mouth to take in food. And one may suffer from disease because of improper nutrition. So one should think about it and uh, one should understand that people who have weak morality are very prone to giving in to greed, hatred, and delusion. It's very easy for these qualities to come in and just take
take over one's life. The sila that the monks keep is called patimauka. And patimauka, in this word, pati means those who observe the basic rules about what to do and not to do, which have been laid down. And in doing what is allowed, one almost one must also avoid doing what is not permitted. And this observation, observing the rules that have been established, brings freedom, mauka. So this is what the Panti Mauka, the monk sila, does. So for one who doesn't keep sila, then sila can't help. Sila is that which makes us a true human. But only if we put it into practice will it make us truly human. So, so when one is able to eat food properly, then one is able to get nourishment and one is able to get an education, train oneself physically, and so on. One is able to one is able to accomplish what one wants. And for us, sila is not the only thing that we are practicing. Sila, morality, is the base for us to develop knowledge and to be able to taste the Dhamma. So it's very important for our mouth of sila to be good if we are going to taste the Dhamma. So today, um, Sayadaji has talked about sila because it is very important. And with this as a basis, it's easy to gain concentration and wisdom. And this is how the Buddha taught. Uh, the Buddha began with teaching sila, and so Sayadaji also has explained it today. If one doesn't believe in individuals, if one doesn't have faith, in individuals, then one should consider that this um, explanation, the practice of sila, is according to the Dhamma, and it's it's natural. So one should one should think about it in terms of practice if one doesn't have faith in individuals. So when one keeps sila, when one keeps good morality, then one's physical behavior becomes gentle. It becomes delightful. It becomes peaceful. And one becomes a true human being. So whatever our level of sila is, for yogis we keep eight precepts. The monks keep the monks' rules. And only by keeping our respective sila, for monks keeping the monks' rules, this makes them a true monk. For yogis keeping the eight precepts, this makes us true yogis. To be a true human being, one must keep at least five precepts. And for monks, monks, monks must keep their patimauka sila pure. So please understand that the sila that we practice is the mouth for us to gain the dhammas of concentration and wisdom. So may you be able to practice beginning with the training of sila and develop the practice of samadhi and panya.